Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us. Last week as a team, we began to consider what we could do to help people stay connected to Trinity while giving an alternative to the newsreel as we journey through this current season. We wanted to create an opportunity for us to pray together, to encourage one another, and to continually be reminded that despite the most recent news, we belong to God and he is watching over us in this difficult time. But we will be together in all of this. So please consider connecting with us daily. If you can't meet us here at 8 a.m., these moments will be archived and so you'll be able to go back and find them. This will become our practice, our rhythm over these next few days. Join us right here, a place to find encouragement, to lean into faith, hope, and love, to be reminded of who God is and who we are, and to not lose sight of the very fact that he is present with us. You'll be able to submit prayer requests in the comments section of this video, or you can send them to us using one of Trinity's social media accounts, either on Facebook or Instagram. As we dig in this morning, I'd love to start with a psalm, and this is from Psalm 34. It says, I bless God every chance I get. My lungs expand with his praise. I live and breathe God. If things aren't going well, hear this and be happy. Join me in spreading the news. Together, let's get the word out. God met me more than halfway. He freed me from my anxious fears. Look at him, give him your warmest smile. Never hide your feelings from him. When I was desperate, I called out. And God got me out of a tight spot. God's angel sets up a circle of protection around us while we pray. Open your mouth and taste. Open your eyes and see how good God is. Blessed are you who run to him. Worship God if you want the best. Worship opens doors to all his goodness. So we're gonna worship in song right now. The song's called Yes I Will. It's a song I often put in on the, in the car when I'm driving somewhere or headed into a really tough situation because it inspires me to remind me that God is right there beside me and that that is exactly where my confidence and my hope lies. I count on one thing The same God who never fails will not fail me now you won't fail me now in the waiting the same god who's never late is working all things out you're working all things out yes i will lift you high in the lowest valley yes i fail me now you won't fail me now in the waiting the same God who's never late is working all things out yes you're working all things out Oh yeah. 
Last year, my oldest son, Nathan, he turned 12. And so we began this process of starting to be able to leave our younger two at home in his more than capable care. And we're a pretty low tech family, but we decided that what we'd do is we'd hook up an iPhone for him for babysitting purposes so that he could call us or text us whenever he needed while we were out, which is a lot when you have a, a kid with a new toy in their hand. Anyway, one of the things that we've been doing with him is, is a daily devotional through version. So he's been choosing plans and then he invites his mom and I into it through their plans with friends feature so that the three of us can interact around the topic for that day. Recently, he started a new plan called Control Controllables, Playing Fearless. And this one day, it used a verse as a jumping off point that I just haven't been able to shake. And it's been rolling around in my mind and in my heart. And it's become a bit of an anchor in my own life for my own family in this season. And it shaped my prayer for the families of Trinity and for the volunteers that serve in kids. The verse is this, it's Romans 15, 13, which says, I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow, and I love this, with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. The guy who wrote this, Paul, is addressing a bunch of people in conflict. See, there's disunity happening. There's, there's right ideas and wrong ideas, and it's, it's caused all sorts of hurt and pain and confusion and finger pointing, and everybody is blaming everybody else, and they're trying so hard to find a way forward. And so he's dressing these people whose worlds have been rocked, who are fighting for safety and security, and they're trying to find a foundation to stand on. And that's not unlike the circumstances that we find ourselves in today. And he's going, you keep trying to stand on all of these other things, but Paul so desperately wants them to see that there's a different story at play. And so his prayer is that they would see this foundation that they have to stand on. And that's what Romans provides in this. A foundation that says, number one, that God is the source of hope. And he could have mic dropped right there. But he says, it's just in these anxious times like these that often the things that we've placed our hope in, they come to light. And I love that this is a prayer from Paul, that it's not this condemnation, but it's an invitation to be reminded about where the source of hope lies, or rather who the source of hope is. The second thing is that when trust is placed in him, he fills them completely with joy and with peace. And that when there's a yes to Jesus, it leads to this inner delight and an inner contentment, regardless of the circumstances that they're facing. And it's not that they're ignorant of the circumstances or that they've put their heads in the sand like, they, you know, like they're pretending like nothing is happening. But it's a joy and a peace in the midst of those circumstances. It's fuel to keep going despite what's going on around them. And not just a little bit. It's not like God's going, you know, you followed me for your whole life and so I'm gonna fill up your cup, but you've been in and out so I'm only gonna give you a little bit. The promise is the same regardless of where you've come from or where you've been. And it says completely, because you've said yes and because you've put your trust in him. And the result of that is an overflow of confident hope. Wouldn't that be nice right about now? They don't do it themselves and neither do we. God is the one that's doing the work. He's the one that's changing hearts and transforming lives. And so we say yes, and God comes in and does the work. Our world is being shaken, and the things that we can put our hope in are being shaken. But there's one place that hasn't been shaken, and that place is actually a person, and that person is Jesus, who came and lived here, who came and experienced all the things that you've experienced. He's asked the questions and felt the fears and in his own moment has said, yes, I will. And when you and I say, yes, I will to that, we are declaring that God is our source of hope and that we're asking him, even though these are anxious and fearful times for our world, for our economy, our businesses, our families, that we're asking him to fill us with joy and peace. And this is why. Because there are two narratives at work. See, the world says there's not enough, and yet the promise of Jesus is that when we trust in him, we are completely filled, and not just filled filled to overflowing with confident hope. 
So even though our hearts may be heavy, and even though we definitely find ourselves in a valley right now, imagine with me today the ways that God could meet you in your families, in your neighbors, in our city, in our world, because we put our trust in the one that the petition of Romans 15, 13 is directed at. So we give a resounding yes today. Yes, I will to God, the source of hope. Yes, I will to the promises of Jesus. And yes, I will to the power of the Holy Spirit. We're gonna take a minute to pray. And so I'd invite you, you know, whether you wanna stay seated where you are or to stand up, in kids ministry, I often invite kids to stand and just to hold their hands open as a reminder that our hearts and our minds are open to the truth that he wants to speak to us. And we come today often with these big worries and these big fears about the future because at this point it's unknown. And yet our yes, I will to God is something that can sustain us in these moments. And so I invite you to hold your hands open and just to name those worries and those fears. What narrative is it that you're putting your trust in today? Am I trusting in that fear and that worry? Or can I give my yes, I will to the God, the source of hope? So God, we stand here or sit wherever we are, with our arms open, with our hearts wide open, looking to you, that our trust would solely lie in you, that our yes, I will comes to you, the one who has walked before us, who lived right here among us and experienced the same things and the same fears and questions that we have, and yet knows the way, and you invite us. Come follow me. So may we give our yes to you today, that we will follow you because you know the way. We're gonna sing the chorus of this song just one last time. to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever.